Yeah. Nice. Cool. Nine on Right. Uh, so my name is uh, Steve Rifkin. I'm otherwise known as Stevenator on Drupal.org, and uh, I've been playing with this site uh, for a couple days now called uh, uh, Quiver. It's going to be released uh, hopefully in the next couple weeks. Uh, and they are distributing films for the little guy. Uh, the company that owns this site uh, distributes films for the big guys and uh, uh, is going to open that up to uh, small filmmakers and things like that uh, for a price. Uh, but anyways, uh, I'm on the film node. Uh, we do have a content type called a film node, and it has all sorts of CCK fields. Uh, and you can see some tabs down here where... Uh, obviously, a node associations that are specific to what films might be, and and how they are. Uh, ooh, thanks, Firefox, and how they are uh, 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 deemed. But the client needed to have uh, in uh, inline form editing without going to that node edit form every single time, because basically loading that node form, we've got a ton of fields, we've got a ton of node references. Locking it all down, loading it all up, it just started to seem like overkill and they requested to have some inline editing. So the idea was then to, uh, to have a little feature set where we'd click a button. Uh, that button would then uh, deliver back that specific CCK uh, formatter. And it looks like with Camtasia running, my, my, my computer is... So hold on one second. Let's see if, uh, if I'm actually receiving an error doesn't look like I'm receiving an error. Oh, there it is. So it finally showed up. Uh, so uh, I got a field in line, and uh, I can enter some stuff here. And I click the Save button, and it takes all of my deliciousness and brings it in. Uh, it looks like uh, my demo is a little off from what it was before. I had to make some changes right before here, so let's try one more field. Uh, it should come back with its own handle. Um, and I'm clicking on my list here. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm real big in Taiwan. So, okay, so it looks like it's not displaying my labels when it returns, but uh, that's, that's for a different topic. So, uh, I'd like to show you how I did this. Uh, it actually was uh, pretty simple, and uh, there's so many different ways to slice this sucker up. Uh, you can build your own JavaScript, which is partly what I did. Uh, you can use modules like the Ajax module or like C tools. Also has a lot of Ajax functions pre-built for you to use uh, uh, to, I think, really achieve uh, uh, for for C tools really achieve a lot more uh, interfacing with views and panels uh, because obviously that's why Arrow Miles built that. Uh, um, but uh, in this demo, we're going to go ahead and look at the Ajax module. Uh, uh, the rest of the site, I should point out down here, uh, this will all be. Um, uh, C tools. Uh, I will use the uh, the table row editing, and if we have time, we can look at some of that. But I'll focus on what was done here. Uh, so, all right, the Ajax module. Uh, the developer uh, uh, who um, manages this module is looking for a co-maintainer. And if I start to get real real skippy about this module, which uh, I've had a good experience with it, I, I'm, I may just dive right in. So. Uh, Cool thing about the Ajax module is that it offers uh, the ability to Ajaxify a form for most, uh, uh, for all your content types. So any node that you define inside of the Drupal interface, uh, we are looking at Drupal 6, but I believe 7 also has it. Uh, as you can see here, it's extremely simple to set up and it just works. Uh, uh, and it has a lot of the most popular stuff where you are using forms, whether it be a node form or a web form. Uh, quick tabs and some WYSIWYG stuff that you can add your Ajax to to, again, have it just work. Uh, so that's the module page at project slash Ajax. And then this is the online documentation. Uh, one of the things that brought me to this the other day was because they don't just have a, a, a module API for you to hook into, uh, but they also have a JavaScript API for you to hook into. And that was the deal clincher for me. I was like, ooh. There are hooks for JavaScript. Yes, sign me up, and uh, you'll see exactly why. Because it certainly takes a, a little bit of the, uh, the, uh, the the work away from actually having to set stuff up. So uh, I've actually gone ahead and enabled the module. Uh, I won't be covering that, and I am on the actual Ajax settings page here uh, at admin settings Ajax, and you just see a list of all of the content types here uh, that come with uh, uh, what I've been doing on this site and building on this site. 
Uh, I also have enabled some other stuff, which gives me uh, this disabled redirect, uh, disable redirect and remove after uh, remove the form from the page after submitting. Uh, so, uh, does anybody really quickly? I didn't even ask. Does anybody have a question? What AJAX really is? Okay, that yeah. Okay, great. So it it, it stands for basically an asynchronous conversation between the browser and the server without having to reload the page. So like Gmail, huge in Ajax, right? So it sends a lot of requests back without reloading the page to get the new content. That saves on bandwidth. It saves on the time that the user has to wait because some, you know, sometimes you may actually have to bootstrap Drupal. And that means to call all of its initialization functions just to get this one little piece of content back is absurd. And why make your user wait three seconds just to get this little snippet back? Um, so uh, um, I think it's like asynchronous JavaScript. Anybody else on the XML, rich XML. Uh, yeah, rich XML? So that's ultimately what it is. And actually, we'll get a chance to look at what's being passed back and forth here. Um, so uh, what I did was I wrote a plugin for the AJAX module, and the simplest way to do this was to actually go ahead and jump over to look at the module uh, and its plugins folders and. Uh, I'll give it a sec there. I hope it's big enough, but you can see some of the, the, big, the big hitters there. Comment, uh, web form, as I mentioned, is one that I've used here. And uh, I created one called Film. Uh, it's, it's all within the Drupal standards of module and info files. So I just created an info file. Uh, the dependencies were the Ajax module and the, the, the Films module that I have created already for my, my Drupal site. And in the module, uh, I'm going to use some of the hooks that the API offers to define my plugin. The first one being, uh, uh, again, the name of my module, Ajax Films underscore Ajax Types, which again is hook Ajax Types. So I'm just defining what the types are. So I've been creative here because what I'm after is the CCK fields. So I'm going to pass in the node type that I'm looking for, which is film, and deliver back an array of fields that I can then loop through to uh, remove the actual field and deliver the type out here where you can see uh, that I've delivered a label of film field colon uh, uh, whatever the widget label is that's coming back from that CCK field definition. So now when I go back over here to this page and I scroll down, you can see that right here is where all of my new custom Ajax fields are, right? So all this does then is wait for Drupal uh, uh, get form to render the form that I'm creating in my module. So just so you can see some of that, we don't really need to focus on that here in this particular presentation, but up here at the top is hook menu for my module. And you can see I've gone through and I've defined some menu paths based off of whatever those uh, icons are that I've put in the page, the, the pencil mark for editing and the plus sign for adding. I've done all of that and I'll real quickly show that as well over here in my TPL files. Uh, we'll talk about that TPL in a second, but right there, that, that text that's highlighted is my actual class that I will be attaching my click events in jQuery to and responding accordingly in the browser. So what I've done here with this, again, is I've just basically told the Ajax module, hey, I've got some form IDs that I'm going to create myself. Uh, so again, node edit is an ID that you can hook into using the Ajax model. So for any node form that you're using, you can uh, hit submit and it'll do that loading on the button and return whatever it is that, that you can define. Or like I showed you here where it says dis the redirect, it will Ajaxify the form and then redirect to the actual view page, assuming that you're on the form. Now for me, I want it one step further because I actually want to deliver that text back that, uh, that I'm calling for. So let's see how I went ahead and did that. Um, I do want to show you one last thing. Uh, for those of you who know, I'm a huge fan of Display Suite. Uh, so uh, I presented on that at Drupal Camp. This is my full node uh, form in Drupal layout, uh, Display Suite layout, excuse me. Uh, there's that poster art and synopsis field that I was playing with at the top. I've got my left, middle, and right columns. And then one of the really cool things about this is that Display Suite uh, uh, integrates with the tabs module. And so here I am down here with these, uh, these tabs. That's, it's really just a setting of how you want the field set to display. So that's how I got these real nifty tabs down here at the bottom. Uh, point and click. <laughs> Who needs to do anything? Uh, so great. Uh, uh, OK, back up to here. So, so ultimately what I did was uh, I associated this. And let's go ahead and open up. 
Oh, check you out. It disappeared on me. Firebug. Uh, so I just want to look at the uh, call or the, the, uh, the link that's on here. Where did you go? There it is. So there's that A. It's got a class of handle, edit, and this really weird one uh, back here on the end, quiver fields processed. Process. That's, that's a weird one, but once you see what I've done, and I tell you that it's Drupal standard to do this using the Drupal, uh, the Drupal JavaScript API that's provided with the Drupal object in the, in the DOM, uh, you'll see that the reason why we put a processed class on any one of our event listeners or, or really one of our objects that are, are listening for any event that's been attached to it, like on load or on click or on hover or on blur, uh, uh, we don't want the DOM to have to process that again when we bring in new stuff and call Drupal attach behaviors. So we're going to look at that right now uh, in code. Uh, so I had to do two tricky things. So I'm gonna, I, I want you to split your mind here. So all that Ajax model, module stuff that I showed you about Ajax, Ajaxifying the form that I called, ignore that for a second. We have to get to that place because ultimately I'm Ajaxifying that field, so I need to have a field on the page to Ajaxify. Well, how do I get that field? Well, I was clicking on that little icon, right? So at the beginning of the process, what I need, and let me find the page, is I need this stuff right here. Okay, so Drupal behaviors. This is basically Drupal's uh, JavaScript object and its onload event. So if you're used to jQuery and you're used to uh, calling jQuery documents uh, ready as you're opening uh, to any uh, JavaScript uh, that you're gonna load on the page, that's basically a way to make sure that other modules other plugins, your calendar pop-up, your this, your that, are not colliding in that onload namespace, okay? So uh, uh, you could be a great developer, but the minute you try to call your own onload function, you could wipe out everything else that's onloading in the page. And uh, uh, you'll sit there and you'll wonder why your stuff isn't working or why the stuff that you had before isn't working. And when I remove this, now everything else works, and when I add it back, now it doesn't. So Drupal really provides us with a great place to do that. So all you would need to do is you'd write Drupal. So you're, you're calling the Drupal object in the DOM. And let me actually show you this. There it is right on the top, Drupal. And you can see that in here are the behaviors. And there's another really powerful one here down here called settings. If you've ever used Drupal Add.js before, uh, it assumes that you want to attach an external JavaScript sheet, but if you pass the parameter of setting in, it'll actually just take your array and populate a bunch of settings in the, the, uh, in the DOM so that you can call those settings later, drupal.settings. And again, you can see my namespace here was quiverfilmsfields.status. So I can check the status on something to see, hey, do I even need to run my JavaScript? Do I even need to open this menu? Is the user allowed to do that? So you really get more high-level JavaScript applications here if you play nice with the Drupal DOM object, okay? So Drupal.behaviors, again, I don't want to collide with other namespaces that might be used. So I'm going to name my own here, Quiver Films Fields. And this is basically an onload function. That's all that we're defining here, okay? So in here, this gets a little bit dicey. But I want you to see that there is that class that I was looking at in the browser when we were looking at that A tag. There it is right there. Quiver fields processed, right? So when I load the page, I'm saying to myself, any A tag that has a class of handle, and once again right here, there's that handle class, that is not a class of quiver fields processed, I'm going to go ahead and add the class, Quiver Fields Process, to it, and then I'm going to attach a jQuery click function onto it, uh, or I should, I should add an event listener. So uh, uh, for those of you that are not familiar with jQuery, jQuery is just a framework, and it basically obscures or abstracts all of the add event listener, uh, get DOM object by ID, JavaScript, real pure JavaScript functions that are enabled in all browsers, and allows you to call them through jQuery, which helps deal with some of the things like IE6 and IE7 not wanting to play with inner HTML and ugh, headaches. 
So use the framework. I don't care if it's jQuery, MooTools, even Prototype to some extent. Those are all great ones. Drupal happens to use jQuery as its uh, framework for JavaScript. Uh, so there's that click function. And the, the actual uh, uh, nomenclature is to call a function with it, within it. You can have an, an external function if you want to call it. But all I did was I set my handle to this, which was whatever I grabbed when I was adding the click function, which looks like this A handle. So I'm looping through whatever one it is. So when I click, I have this A tag that becomes this, and I'm setting it as a, a variable. And I'm going to pass that variable into my callback function, which is below here. You don't really need to worry about much of this except for this little piece right here. So I'm using the jQuery Ajax function. Uh, the Ajax module does the exact same thing. But because of the way that I needed to get my module uh, working in the page, I needed to deliver. Ajax works on forms. Ajax module works on forms. I needed to actually get my form onto the page and then set that up to be Ajaxified, right? So in order to do that, I just had a get request. Uh, where am I going to get? I'm going to get from the actual attribute of my handle, which was my A tag, and the attribute of href. So really all I'm calling is the actual href right here of the page. The really great thing about this is if my uh, there it is is if my uh, my user has JavaScript turned off in the browser, I've already got a built-in callback page that's going to show me the field uh, and everything that I need to go ahead and edit that field uh, using Drupal's page wrapper and layout. There it is right there. So my user who doesn't have JavaScript enabled because they're paranoid also can play ball. So once I enable that click function, however, when it clicks, it's going to run this function. It's going to take that href right there, and it's going to call back to the server asynchronously. So it's not going to reload the browser. And it's going to deliver back the response that I've asked it to deliver in my function. Okay, I don't know how far into the actual function I should go, but... Uh, uh, this is the one that we're calling right here. This is again in hook menu. I'm, my callback is for the edit page, so we might as well go find that sucker. Here it is. So it looks like, as you can see before, I set the title, and uh, as I said, you can see before, you can see that right here. And uh, the form that we're going to deliver back is right here. And then there's a couple things that are involved here. So the biggest thing is that I am bringing back a function called Drupal JSON. Uh, JSON stands for Job JavaScript Object Notation. So this is another way of defining arrays in the browser. Okay, and we can look at exactly what the output of that is. So uh, without further ado, let's do one where you can actually see what that click is doing. Uh, I am using Firebug. Recommend it for this particular type of uh, debugging and uh, working through. I just find that uh, versus WebKit's uh, uh, Web Inspector, the Firebug Net section really, really is great to watch uh, because it shows you everything you need to know. So let's click on this one right here for the trailer. So you can see right here, there is that request right there that just showed up in Net. And I'm clicking on this. You can see what was sent in the headers. You can see what was sent as a response. There's all that JSON. And Firebug actually even gives you a JSON tab that you get a nice structure of the output. And there is that form right there that we are seeing rendered on the page uh, when it calls back. So that's this form right here with the save button and all that kind of stuff. Okay. <clears throat> so if I were to have done that without enabling the, J uh, the Ajax module, uh, this form would be a vanilla form. If I click save, that's, that save will reload the browser page. If I had loaded the page with this form on it, and I instead of calling it asynchronously, and I had the Ajax module available to it, Ajax module would have recognized this form as an Ajaxified form and would have attached all of the behaviors correctly. But since I didn't get to do that, Initially, with the page load, I brought this form in later. I've got to attach those behaviors myself. 
So I've got one little, uh, one little function left to call at the end here to get all the goodies that come with Ajax module. Okay, so again, right there at the beginning of our, our talk here, I went and I Ajaxified the, and what were we doing, the trailer URL? There it is right there. So I said, look out for this one. And so what the Ajax module does is it goes into that form array and it tells the form, hey, we're ready for you. We know you're coming. And it sticks a class on the form of... Ajax form. So this comes from the Ajax module. So I opened up the Ajax module so we can see that and check this out right here. You can see this is all again in the Drupal namespace. It creates its own namespace and then creates an initializing function. So it's looking for any anything that's within the context and again context is basically DOM objects. So if I got this huge array of divs with all of its children in there, with p tags and a tags and all that kind of stuff, that all exists if I said that the context is the parent div. If I say the context is five divs in, it'll only look within there for any, uh, uh, any class of Ajax form to apply all of these Ajax module goodies to it. So going back to my Ajax, or going back to my JavaScript that I wrote, here's that page again. There's that get. So on complete, look at the last thing that I call here. Recognize that? Drupal.ajax.initialize. And then I'm passing in the context, which is just that field. I only want it to work on that field. I don't want it to touch the rest of the page. And what is it doing when it loops the page? It's looking for anything that's got quiver processed on it and skipping it. If it's got quiver processed and only applying the stuff that it needs to to the necessary place. That will make your browser snappy. Uh, <laughs> anybody who's been here at Drop Labs listening to Blake complain for the last two weeks about why his browser CP, uh, why the CPU on his computer goes up because his browser is just looping this one function and he can't find it. So again, this is one of those ways to prevent stuff like that by, uh, by initializing your behaviors properly, just so I can show that again. Uh, Nope, this is the end of the presentation. Where was that? Here it is. By initializing your behaviors properly to not process quiver fields processed. Right? Uh, so that pretty much shows you how I got that function to happen. The last piece I'd like to show is uh, back down in here. Uh, this again is the Ajax film module file where I declared the plugin types. So my plugin is now working, created all of these new form IDs that Ajax module is now aware of, where it can insert that Ajax-form class. Uh, I just needed to do one last thing, which was to pre-process the page because I wanted to make sure that my own JavaScript sheet gets sent. And now we're going to deal with some of the Ajax plugin hooks. And the uh, best place to see that is right here on their online uh, documentation. Now here are all the, uh, these are the server-side hooks, but the JavaScript API also has its own hooks, and here they are right here. So you get, on the page initialize, you can call your own JavaScript. On the submit, so before it all goes off, right, uh, if a message comes back, if there's going to be a message that comes back to the page, you can hook into that, and you can send it somewhere else. Uh, usually it just wants to print the message into a little field that it creates for itself. Uh, after the message, of course, uh, and then obviously the rest of them. I'm using complete because that's what I want to hook into. So you can see once again, I am playing within the namespace that it's giving me. I probably should have called this quiver film to, to keep more Drupal-esque because I should name it. But since this plugin was Ajax film, I just decided to use the plugin name. So again, if hook is complete, let's do some stuff here. So uh, let's see what did I do. Uh, I, I took the arguments that are passed back to the page, and let's go ahead and uh, look back here in that DOM, uh, the net. Here's the return, uh, and actually I want the return this time of the, uh, the actual form. So uh, check that out, actually. You can see that it turned from a get to a post. So anybody familiar with gets and posts and why they work that way? Does anybody like, would they like me to talk about that? No? Get to you later. Uh, 
So uh, no, you did you did you did posts back back when you were doing sites. I'm sure gets in posts. Uh, so here's the returned JSON from that post, and this is what the AJAX module has given me. Just all sorts of goodies. I get a status of if it was good or bad. I get uh, these debugs that I can set. There's my my message status, and it actually uh, has the actual messages that came back. Looks like I've DPM some stuff, so uh, that's that's my own gobbledygook. But but there's the message that should have come back. The trailer has been saved, right? Um, oops. So I'm sorry. Do you have a, a handler that's that's actually saving the data, or is that something that the AJAX module provides to you once you register that field? Uh, uh, yes, I have a handler that's saving that data. Okay. And and the AJAX module is just looking at my form action. Okay. And the form action is that handler mm -hmm. because I set it up using Drupal's form API. In fact, uh, I'll show, I see you over there, Lee. Uh, uh, that's all done right here. You can see uh, there's, there's the form array being built. Uh, the action, of course, is based off of the page action, yada, yada, yada. And it should have all of my parameters and stuff. Uh, I actually should make, make mention, uh, I, I started building this side of it, but then Ash, uh, Ashok Mudi finished this side while I focused on the browser side again. So uh, he gets credit for uh, all of these superb functions that, again, it, it interacts with CCK. We're not even dealing with the node. Right. But then we're using the nodes validate and the node submit functions to bring all of that stuff back in and print out any, uh, any validation errors. So it all, it all just works the way it should. I didn't have to do anything special. I think that's the, that's the point I, I mentioned. We have okay. Uh, so, yeah, the last little piece here. So uh, I'm looking in the args that are returned for the form ID. So <laughs> look how nice this is. Down below in the args, uh, where is that form ID? There it is right there. So uh, I need to change this form ID from underscores to dashes. So I use an, a regex here, and I'm going to change it to dashes. So now I have an ID that I can then use my jQuery selector to select that form ID. And then I look up the DOM to parents, and I replace the whole thing with what I bring back in args, options, field content. So let's look at that. So I'm, I'm, here's JSON. The JSON you can pretend is the args. First step down into options. And in options, I have my field content, which, as you can see, is a bunch of HTML. So I'm just inserting that onto the page. I'm replacing what was there with what I've got. And then the last true step is Drupal attach behaviors. The reason why I'm doing that, well, I just I got this new uh, uh, pencil mark that came back onto the page with the new HTML that I just got because I'm just using the CCK module to deliver that content. Well, that content is built off of this, uh, co this TPL file, so I'm going to get all of that same HTML back onto my page, but because I didn't load the browser to do it, the browser is not aware of that new edit or plus sign. So I need to tell it to rerun Drupal behaviors. Well, there's a bunch of modules that are attaching a bunch of behaviors onto that page. So you best be sure that you put a quiver processed or a processed class on everything else that already exists. But now my new little pencil doesn't have that. So it will verify. And it will, uh, where is it? Where is it? Wait for it. Here it is right here. It will, it will get past this one, and we will now add a new click function onto just that new A tag that got brought back onto the page. And now it's ready to go again. If my user wants to click edit again, sure enough, let's do it. Let's edit, new field, save, back on the page, and we're ready to start the process again. So uh, that is the AJAX module. That is my implementation of the AJAX module. Um, the bottom of the page here, and I should speak about uh, whether or not I'm going to or not going to. Uh, because the bottom of my page here has all of these tabs, and I've got so many more ways to uh, to deal with this right now. Down here, I'm, I'm using a couple other AJAX style modules. Uh, uh, I don't mean the AJAX module; I just mean a style of module that brings AJAX functions, like C Tools. C Tools has a whole AJAX side to it that is awesome and works with tables and works with restriping your table after you remove a row or you append a row. So uh, I'm interested in using all of those predefined functions to once again stay plug inable to keep my client happy as we move through future iterations of development. We've got Drupal 7. This is a Drupal 6 site. So all of this should stay pretty pure 
uh, and be a very simple day of upgrading those modules rather than having to refactor all sorts of crazy code. So um, I'll open it up to questions. Uh, if you have a specific site you're working on and you're curious about what you should do, uh, throw out the question. We can talk about it, but it is 10 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions out there? Can, can, you show, can you show us some of the functionality, like how it looks UI-wise? Uh, instead of just the back end, yeah. you want to see? Yeah. Sure, here's some front end right here. So uh, I, I just... I just I just uh, I just notified you that uh, we we do have some issues with um, the labels not coming back in, and I, I don't know why that is right now. I believe I was having some problems with the labels and the actual uh, display fields section of CCK right on your node, and for some reason all of my uh, label settings had gotten wiped right before the presentation, so I've, I had to manually do that. So okay, so I brought the field onto the page, and I click save. This is all AJAX model. I get this real nice loading. So you can see that the label's gone, but uh, let's go ahead and change. Let's let's update the text this time, and let's put uh, uh, let's put hello world in here, and let's uh, let's just see the goodies. There it is, hello world. So all of these fields work like that, right? These fields down here are going to be attached to a completely separate thing. So these fields down here, since they're all working in line. They actually aren't CCK fields on my node view right now. These are CCK fields on a related node. So I'm using node reference to grab these fields. And this is actually a, a view and a, 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 a view row style called edit view, uh, which uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not fully ready to endorse, although it's really cool. Uh, I probably will have to write a patch to get it to do what I want to do because uh, a lot of what it's doing is great, but it doesn't do exactly what I want. And there were a lot of other ones that worked with views that way as well, uh, like edit view fields, uh, um, which, uh, again, had great stuff but just wasn't right for me. Uh, so I may write uh, a little workaround for that as well. Where did it fall short? Uh, so, yeah. Uh, uh, edit view fields fell short because it made every single field in the table down below uh, editable. But if I wanted to bring in an entire row form, couldn't do that. It's only by field, right? So each row is a node for me, and that should be simple. Now, edit view offered something like that, but the problem was uh, the client wants inline editing capabilities right here so that when I finish this one and I have a callback to my, and I'll just show it to you because it, it makes sense when I look here. When I have a callback here to my complete hook, right? Not only that, I'm going to use these functions right here that I'm saving up to reset the form values so that they are right back onto an empty form. And of course, I will either prepend or append the new node down onto the table. So uh, again, I would have to write those functions. Why do that when I could just use C tools? So that will be uh, my evening tonight. So I'll be putting on a pot of coffee if you want to come over. I'm in the valley. <laughs> uh, any other questions about those types of things? I, I'm, I'm really surprised that Drupal doesn't really have something that takes care of this. Uh, I got to say that. But considering how complicated it is, and also considering about how many different ways a module can plug in to the Drupal 6 framework, I get it. Drupal 7, I have a feeling there are going to be huge leaps and bounds for this. Uh, even Drupal 8, they're already starting to talk about having a real just centralized Ajax API that you can use, and I think the Ajax module is the best candidate for it. I love C tools, but uh, uh, the Ajax module just blew me away with the API functions on the JavaScript side, let alone my server side API functions and hooks. So, do you have a question, Steve? Yeah, did the Ajax, does this module, do you have a suggestion for doing this in Drupal 7? Something no, like this? Oops. Not out of experience. So, uh, If, if Ajax module has a release, does it have a release? I, I didn't even look. No, it doesn't. It doesn't? I, would just use it. <laughs> uh, I don't think there's a lot in here other than its core hook functions that you wouldn't just be able to pull the module from six, take a peek at where it breaks in seven, and, get, and be moving in about two hours, I bet. Okay. I also would check head on, on, on Git and see if uh, it, it exists, if they have a developer's branch in seven. So, but uh, but you can you can make those conversions pretty quickly. I bet the the real gold is is again. I, I love the hooks for the API and the server side, but 
the Ajax uh, namespace in the Drupal object in the in the browser that this guy wrote is 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 awesome. It's just awesome. And uh, uh, yes, I can write the jQuery Ajax function again and again and again, but this is pretty much completely abstracted it, and you've got great hooks that you can write and uh, a great way to call uh, just based on this little uh, snippet of code that gets inserted into your form. Now, if you want to do stuff outside of forms, maybe not the best. Uh, you know, at that point, I would start writing my own jQuery because jQuery is just so easy to write. So... But that's that's my only suggestion. You know what? If I if I come across a project in the next couple of months, I can post about it and uh, make sure you you're, you're notified about it. Another question? Um, does it uh, does it have any built-in architecture to handle like concurrency issues? Like two people are trying to edit against the you know the same node or anything like that? Uh, yes. In our callbacks, we do have some concurrency issues built in, but, but that's something you had to build manually. That's no. No, ultimately we're we're still just using the same Drupal node functions. So if somebody else has a lock on the node, it's going to reply back in the Drupal uh, it's form set error is the actual node module function, right? But it'll just reply back that same thing that you get when you usually see a node that's being edited by two people. It'll just be uh, at the field level. So maybe it doesn't make the best sense to the user right now, and I'll have to rewrite the actual message, but. Yeah, it's all, I mean, I, I, I tried not to deviate from Drupal paradigms. And I was just pleasantly surprised with how fast I was able to erect this. I mean, we're talking six hours, and all of a sudden this thing was working. Now, that doesn't include the server-side code. Ashok wrote that stuff, so I think that took him maybe two or three hours. But it's pretty good for a day's work. Question? Um, the Ajax model doesn't have a Seven. Would C tools be helpful? Yes. Yes, that, that, that actually is a great suggestion, Steve. Uh, uh, Can you repeat the question? So the question was, since Ajax module doesn't have a Drupal 7 release candidate or even uh, any, anybody working down that path right now, uh, uh, is C tools a, a good possibility for that? And absolutely it is. Uh, okay, so C tools is not, um, yeah, it's certainly plug uh, It's You can write C tools plugins. Uh, but the actual easiest way, and it's a great reason that you asked that, Lee, because sure enough, look at this. I have it already loaded up in the browser for you. Uh, CTools does have an Ajax demo module, uh, and you can go in and look at the code that uh, Earl Miles himself wrote to demo this module. Uh, uh, CTools' main difference is that it has some helper functions that you need to write into your callback to do... Uh, two main things and of course some other secondary and tertiary things but the main thing is one strip away the Drupal page wrapper so that you're only returning content to the browser and you're not actually reconstructing pages within pages if anybody of you ever tried to open an iframe or a light box to another page in your Drupal site and you get the admin menu in that sucker that's because that's what's happening so uh, 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 Ctools adds all sorts of great stuff to do that for you so when you click on a modal uh, it's just going to load in the actual um, uh, form items that you're actually requesting. So there you go. I don't actually have an entire page load here. Now he actually also has a multi-step form in here, so I'm not going to go through that process. But um, uh, so Ctools is out. These functions are already written. You would just need to read the API for the functions. Um, and, and I'll show you the code right now that I have open because it certainly is easy to look at. And you're looking at this stuff right here. So C tools include Ajax is uh, a piece that Earl wrote uh, to strip away all of the unnecessary theming layers that you're not going to need for the actual modal. Uh, or excuse me, for your uh, I, I, I strike that, reverse it. It was actually the modal include that does that. Uh, and then the Ajax are the basic Ajax functions that need to be set up on the page. Um, uh, so again, these bring in all other functions on the server side for you to be able to write back and forth using C tools. And then this last call, the AJS call, will then bring in onto your page the actual um, initializing functions like you saw me using uh, Ajax initialize or that dot, uh, the Drupal behaviors in my own namespace where you had the click function. This is the, the call that will actually enable that in the page so that here, when we're looking at this, Oh, hello. Uh, 
HTML. And so here, you know, I, I don't even know what it is that we're looking at on this link. But I'll bet you it's in here. There it is. C tools use modal is what it's spitting out. So I and, and you know you you can just go down through this. So we'll we'll stop here. But uh, I know that there's one more in here that uh, here it is right here. He's actually writing the link as a as a, a a modal link. So that's adding all of his styles for him. So the the reason why I, I liked Ajax a little better initially was because I, I could just write my own stuff still. Here you're you're a little more within the context of C tools, and I I don't want that to be a negative because that's okay. It's okay to have somebody else who kind of knows the river better than you do driving the boat a little bit while you get to play with the, uh, you know, the throttle, right? So, uh, so that's how he does that. And, yes, yeah, so like I said, Lee, th this example here is great because not only that, it does show the, the table actions and removing the actual table rows. Awesome. And uh, here's uh, one more that uh, if I refresh this page, uh, he shows uh, some inline uh, callbacks off of links. So if I click on Hello World, it changes this H1 right here to Hello World. So all built in, and he did it in like 100 lines of code. So, And I mean all of these are in 100 lines of code. So uh, great, huh? Any other questions? Yeah, Ajax. Uh, let's stop that recording.